Team, keep it clean. Uh, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we watched. When you see in this video, it will have been a couple of days ago, because uh, obviously the, the Keith Mitchell news, it kind of um, not necessarily overshadowed the win, but it like kind of dampened uh, our mood on the win. But still a big win by the Baltimore Ravens nonetheless. Uh, it does suck that moving forward, the Baltimore Ravens will be without Keith Mitchell. Uh, but I do still believe that this team is Super Bowl bound and that they'll get the job done. They just they face a lot of adversity this year. Uh, and this is just another not necessarily even roadblock, but another speed hump that they'll have to get over uh, when it comes to making their way through uh, dealing with adversity. Um, let's start off with this Baltimore Ravens offense, man. Uh, their offense, they they left a lot of points out there on the field. Um this game, by the way, the Baltimore Ravens defense played, uh, this game should have been a blowout. It, the, the, the score should not have even been as close as it was. I mean, the Ravens ended up being 23-7, uh, but it could have been 37-7. It could have been 40-7. It could have been a lot of – I mean, and even when you look at the Jaguars side, they missed two field goals, so that's six points right there. Trevor Lawrence, he fumbled, and they – I don't think they were in the red zone, but they were close to it, so that's possible points right there. So Jaguars, they, they, they left some points on the field as well. Um, but the Baltimore Ravens offense, they, they, they left a lot out there uh, early on. They just weren't finishing drives. Their first drive of the game, they were moving the ball downfield, and then they just came up short. Um, and then from there, the offense was just it was like wishy-washy. Um, Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson, just to start with him, uh, the interception. We'll start with that, and then we'll get into everything else afterwards. The interception. Uh, I guess he that the guy baited him. Number two was he was sitting right at, uh, on top of Nelson Aguilar and just waiting. He's like, oh, is Lamar going to throw it? I know he ain't going to throw it. Will he throw it? Will he throw it? And Lamar threw it, picked him off. Uh, so great play by number two. Number two also got a sack on Lamar Jackson as well. So he was having himself a little game against Lamar Jackson. Uh, but obviously Lamar Jackson got the best of him in the team because the Ravens ended up coming out with a win. And you know what? Before I start talking about Lamar Jackson, I want to talk about these Ravens and going into this game. I was very worried about this game. Um, I did expect them to win, but, but before, like, today, but, well, I'm recording this on Sunday night. Well, now it's technically Monday morning, 12, 10 a.m., well, 12, 11 a.m. But anyway, um, going into this game against the Jaguars, I thought the score was going to be 31-23, Ravens willing to win. But then on Sunday, where – just going into the game and, and watch it. Oh, actually, go back to Saturday when the Steelers lost to the Colts. Uh, and then the Broncos, they lost to the Lions. And it was like, oh, so now all the Ravens got to do to get in the playoffs is beat the Jaguars. I was like, oof. I was a little nervous. That made me nervous because we've seen it so many times when the Baltimore Ravens have everything lined up for them. And all Ravens got to do is take care of their own business. They end up coming up short. But this year has been different. Because there have been so many times that we've talked about on here how the Baltimore Ravens have had so many different things lined up for them, and they've taken care of their business. So they've had help from this team, that team, that team lost, that team lost, this team won that helped them, that team won that helped them. But the biggest help that they've got has been from themselves. They've been taking care of enough of their own business to where they're even in this position in the first place. So that's been a beautiful thing. So shout out to the Baltimore Ravens for taking care of that. Now, um... With them, oh, and then another thing that worried me about this game. Uh, right before the game, just watching the Sunday Night Football show, the pre show, and everybody picking the Ravens. Like, I think one person picked the Jaguars, maybe Mike Florio or something, but everybody picking the Ravens. Ravens, Ravens, Ravens. Like, oh, yeah, Ravens gonna take care of business because of their defense, this, their offense, that. So was, I was like, ooh, oh man, all these people, people picking Ravens. And even my wife, she even said it too, because she was watching the pre show with me. She was like, oh man, whenever everybody picks Ravens, she said, that's when they end up losing. Whenever, every, whenever everybody picks them, they end up losing. So I was thinking, oh, man, everybody picking them and da-da-da-da, but they took care of business. So Ravens, in this game, it really showed me that they embraced being not a top team, but the top team in the AFC and one of the top teams in the NFL. They have really embraced it. They, they have, and they still got more work to do, but they're learning how to deal with everybody looking at them like, oh, those Ravens, they're pretty good. They're learning how to hear that noise, but still take care of their business. So th this game was huge for them in that regard. Now with Lamar Jackson, we talked about the interception. But with Lamar Jackson, when you look, if you just looked at his numbers, 
then you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Again, 14 for tw- out of 24, 171 yards, uh, one touchdown, one interception, got sacked three times for 26 yards, 12 carries for 97 yards, 8.1 yards per carry. His longest run was 21 yards. You look at his numbers and you're like, okay, they cool, ain't all that. But is and, and then some people will wonder why is why are people talking about Lamar Jackson in in, in the MVP race for what? Well, how, how? Look at his numbers. What are to know why people consider Lamar Jackson and put him in an MVP race? You can't just look at it. You have to look at the games. You have to. You 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 have you you can't just look at a stat sheet. And go based off of that. You have to see what Lamar Jackson does in these games because it's crazy. It's crazy. The stuff that he does, it makes absolutely no sense. It makes no sense. And I said this during our live stream, during the game. I feel like Lamar Jackson, he knows that his ability, the ability that he has, it's above most people in the league. Probably most people in the world. And a lot of times it looks like he's out there just playing. And a lot of times he, he, when he's running, he's going half speed. When he's shaking people, going half speed, not even going full speed. And we, it's like we hardly ever see him go full speed. And Lamar is just crazy with it, man. So for, for some of the plays, the, the plays that he was getting out of, the almost sacks and the plays that he was making, it's just insane, man. It's insane. And from what we see Lamar do on a weekly basis, his just the expectations that we have for him, just they, they go through the roof. And it's because he set such a high standard for what he does. What's normal for him is not normal. It's really not normal. And it's not fair. So, but shout out to Lamar, man. Um, he made a whole lot of plays. Again, there were some plays that he left out there. There was an interception um, with Rashad Bateman. There was a couple of drops. The one in the end zone, Lamar was getting pressured, and he threw off his back foot, so he didn't get enough umph on it. He could have put a little more on it. Uh, but Rashad Bateman did still get two hands on it, had the opportunity to catch it, he dropped it. Um, one thing Lamar has been doing though, which we really appreciate, uh, especially over these past couple of weeks, he's been getting rid of that ball, man. He's been throwing that ball away. Now in this game, there were a lot of plays where he was holding on to that ball for a long time, but some great plays came out of it, especially the one to Isaiah Likely, who has been stepping up like crazy, like crazy, man. Isaiah Likely, man. He, he's nice with it, man. Isaiah Likely, five catches, 70 yards, uh, and a touchdown. And, of course, I think everybody's favorite play besides a touchdown was that play. Well, I thought it was going to be an interception. Lamar Smoot, who we tried to sign, but the Jaguars brought him back. He, he grabbed Lamar. Lamar made a miss. He got out of it. Uh, scrambled, scrambled around, scrambled around, scrambled around. Saw Isaiah Likely threw it up to him. And that ball was just hanging in the air for like 20 minutes. And the Jaguars defender was right there. He was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to get a pick on Lamar Jackson. Let's go. Isaiah Likely said, nope, that's mine. And that was such an amazing play. My guy Mike brought up how that reminded him of the Chiefs game, the, the Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes game from way back in 2018. Yeah, Lamar's rookie year. We threw it up, and Willie Sneed went and caught it. It was a crazy catch. So it reminded him of that. And I was like, yeah, it is just like that. But shout out to Isaiah Likely, who has been stepping up like crazy. Like crazy. Charlie Cola. Charlie Cola, he he almost had a touchdown, but he got stopped a couple yards short. So okay, it's all good, man. So shout out to him, um, Gus Edwards. And I know we kind of going back and forth, but Gus Edwards, he continued to show like, hey, don't forget about me, because he started off slow. The running game overall started off slow for Keaton Mitchell. For Gus Edwards, it started off slow for both of them. But as the game went on, they kept picking it up. And then even with Justice Hill, like uh, Keaton Mitchell, he had nine carries for seventy three yards, eight point one yards per carry. Boy, we're gonna miss that, man. We are going to miss that bad, man. Uh, Gus Edwards, 16 carries for 58 yards, 3.6 yards a carry, and he had a touchdown. And Gus Edwards, like a lot of those carries, they came at the very end of the game where Ravens were just clocking it. They were just running out the clock. Uh, Justice Hill, five carries for 23 yards, averaged 4.6 yards per carry. So the running game, they had, wow, they had 251 rushing yards. I didn't even realize that. Because Lamar, he, of course, got the 12 for 97, so he had a big chunk of it too. But their running game... Got a lot of people that contribute, man. And now they're going to get another one to contribute, that being Melvin Gordon. So we'll see how that goes. Now, Odell Beckham Jr. in this game. Uh, he had been being a big contributor over the past couple of weeks. Um, but this game, he had one catch, and then he had that drop. Oh, that drop. But it's all good. He ain't, ain't going to go off every game. Not every player is going to go off every game. We want them to. And Zay Flowers, he, he was not really involved in this game either. But, again, hey, the Ravens won. They won. 
They won. And, and that's the, the thing that matters the most, whether this person was involved, that person was involved, the Baltimore Ravens, they won. Because um, Zay Flowers, he just had the one catch for seven yards. And the thing about Zay Flowers that I, that I love, that he he's just not afraid, man. He's not afraid. He will go up and get it. He's very aggressive. Um, I, I love that draft pick, love his style of play. He fits right in perfectly, man. Uh, and, I mean, him being from Florida is a nice little bonus, too. Um. As far as the passing game, yeah, there wasn't really much out of outside of that. Gus Edwards had one catch for 11 yards. Odell Beckham, one for 14. Keith Mitchell, two for 15. Charlie Kohler, one for 15. Rashad Bateman, he was getting involved early. He had three catches for 39 yards. Then he had those two drops. But um, it is what it is, man. Now, on defense, <laughs> look, look who the leading tackler was. I didn't even realize this. Leading tackler was Kyle Hamilton. Leading tackler was Kyle Hamilton. And, and that just makes so much sense because he's just such an amazing player. Um, just a matter BK. Matter BK continues his streak 11 games straight with at least half a sack. Uh, he continues his streak and he knows, like, he was smiling. He knows he's going to get paid. He's going to get a lot of money. A whole lot of money. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for him to see how much it ends up being. Uh, but he, yeah, he's going to get his bread. Um, but he made a difference. Uh, he got the sack, of course. The sack ended up being a fumble. But then there was another play on a different drive where he threw Trevor Lawrence down, and Trevor Lawrence threw the ball, but in the, in, it ended up being intentional grounding because there was not a receiver in the area. So Justin Matter BK has continued to make his mark. This defense, they gave up seven points. They gave up seven points to Trevor Lawrence, who loves to throw that ball downfield and was throwing the ball downfield. This defense throughout the game, they were giving up a lot of chunk plays. They were giving, a lot of, giving up a lot of chunk plays. And, and, and early on, I, what I appreciated, though, that um, they were giving up plays on the ground. Not as bad as last week against the Rams, but they were giving up a lot on the ground early on. But with the Baltimore Ravens, when their offense slowly was pulling away, so that slowly took the Jaguars' run game out of it a little bit, not all the way, because Trevor Lawrence, he was getting his on the ground. Um, but the, the, their run game slowed down a lot because the Ravens started pulling away a bit. Um, but their defense, again, seven points, man. What more could you ask for? Seven, you gave up seven points. Again, there were two missed field goals. So, that was that. But, hey, your defense held the offense to a point to where they missed those field goals. Had your defense given up a couple more yards on each of those drives, maybe they make those field goals. But your defense didn't. They missed them. Then Trevor Lawrence, he fumbled the ball. I don't know what that was. Arthur Millette picked it up. And Arthur Millette, ooh, he had a rough game. But, yeah, he picked it up. So this defense, they they did what they had to do. Now the pass rush this game was ugly. It was terrible. Um, it just they could not get to Trevor Lawrence. He was getting that ball out. And sometimes even if he would hold the ball for a little bit, he would give his receivers a chance. He would throw that ball downfield, man. But the Baltimore Ravens, they did give up some downfield passes. Now they did give up some chunk plays like we talked about, but they didn't break too often. And when you think about it, the the touchdown that the only touchdown that the, the the Jaguars got was on that broken play. Arthur Millette, it looked like he thought that he had help over top, and Geno Stone, um, he he wasn't up top all the way, and it just it was a big mess up, big hiccup, big mistake, big error on the Baltimore Ravens part. But again, seven points, and for the 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 point to come on like a, 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 I don't want to call it a freak play like that, but and not even a fluke play, but. It had for it to happen like that. It wasn't a grinded out drive. It was just a play that just broke down. The Ravens defense broke down. That's something that doesn't happen too often. So this defense, again, seven points, man. Seven points. Still got some work to do, of course. But seven points. Can't ask for anything much better than that. So the Baltimore Ravens, again, they beat the Jaguars, so they're officially in the playoffs, which is a beautiful thing. And they can't stop now. Now you got the 49ers coming up. Dolphins coming up, Steelers coming up. So three tough games, three very tough games. But I do love the fact that the Baltimore Ravens, they, they just keep setting themselves up nice, man. They keep putting themselves in great position to where they can scoreboard watch stress-free. They don't have to be one, oh, man, what's going to happen with that team? Or, oh, we need them to lose so we can get in. We need to, no, 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 no. You're in control. You're in control. You have the power right now. Now it's up to it's up to them to find out what they're gonna do with it. 